broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello there, everyone. As always, thank you for being here. It is a delight to see all these, some familiar names, some brand new names. And uh, I want to welcome you to tonight's Psychic Hour. I also want to say I'm really proud of you that you remembered to be here because usually the psychic hour is a little bit farther into the month. Uh, this month is early, very early. Here we are on the Ides of March. And so if you're hearing this uh, on the recording because you forgot that March's psychic hour was already <laughs> scheduled for the first, well, I forgive you. And you'll just have a wonderful time listening to all the good things we speak of this evening. Meanwhile, we've got we've got a lot to cover this evening. We have so much going on and uh, so many good things coming up and so much to talk about this evening. This is a major big time in our world and in our personal lives as well. Uh, before we get started, I want to just make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first of all, this is my psychic hour, always free, always open to anybody who can get here early enough to sign up and get in and get here uh, to be on with me at nine o'clock once a month. And the replay is always set public on YouTube. So, you know, if you miss it or if you want to see it again, you'll be able to go to YouTube and, and see the whole thing all over again. And I know a lot of times people do that because it, this hour goes by so quickly that sometimes things that are important just go zip and you say, what did she say? Or I should say, what did her guide say? Because everything that I tell you in this hour is channeled from my guides. So I'm actually the vehicle that they speak through. That's what it is to be a channel. I'm repeating what they're telling me or showing me or feeling at me, etc., etc. But the information comes from my guides and your guides. So as we go through this psychic hour, I'm going to give you quickie instructions and then I'm going to make my announcements. Each person that gets called, first of all, I see hands here. So some of you have been here before. If you want to get called on for me to do a mini reading, raise your hand. And you do that just by clicking on the hand on your control board. And Lisa is my assistant. She's in the chat room. And she will either be answering questions in the chat room herself or choosing who to read those questions out because some people don't like their voice heard. Or she'll be calling on usually people that she hasn't called on for a long time or that have never been here before. So if you're new, you stand a better chance of actually getting your question answered. So raise your hand and that's how the, the choice proceeds. Meanwhile, when I'm giving answers to those questions, I'm doing so much more than answering one question. My guides have a way of addressing things for almost everybody on the call with every question they're answering. And so even though the question that's being answered might not be yours, pay attention because your question or the things you need to know could very well be getting covered in that answer. So once you're called on, I would like you to say your name, just your first name, don't need your last, where you're calling from. We get people from all over the place, so it's a lot of fun to know where you're from. What your sun sign is, because this thing that you're seeing on the screen is an astrology chart that I cast for the psychic hour. It's a throwaway chart. It counts only for this hour, and everyone who appears here on the call will have their questions answered from this chart. Isn't that amazing? So if you tell me your sun sign, I can pinpoint you, and I can give you all kinds of amazing information that's accurately going on for you and everybody else who's part of your sun sign. So I want your name, where you're calling from, your sun sign, what you're most grateful for in your life right now. That's so important. So give that some thought. What are you most grateful for right now? And then your specific question. And I'm going to go through as many of those as I can during the hour. And what I do, those people who don't get called on, folks, if you stay through the entire hour, I'm going, and, and I didn't answer your question, I'm going to gift you with the opportunity to ask me one question anytime in the next 24 hours, before 9 o'clock tomorrow night. 
So anyone who stays for the full hour who is here on the call, you're welcome. If you didn't get called on, to ask your question via email. And you can do that by writing Lisa S A Inc. at AOL.com or by clicking on the email attached to uh, right attached to this program that I work with. So you're still going to get your question answered. And that's my way of saying thank you for being here with me. And I appreciate you. That's what I'm grateful for, that all of you are here and listening and hopefully learning and growing and having healthier lives because of the information that my guides and I can bring through for you. And that to me is pure joy. So here are my announcements. The next psychic hour, you'll see it down in the lower, my cursor on it, right hand corner, is going to be on April 5th of 2020. So hopefully I'll see you back here then. And uh, that is also going to be at 9 p.m. And that's almost exactly a month from now. So you folks are going to be, oh, my goodness, I need my fix. I've got to see that psychic hour. <laughs> so get here early because I suspect that that month is going to be a very crowded psychic hour. Also, I want to announce for those of you who are still sitting on the fence about the cruise, the psychic cruise that I do every other year now um, is going to be on April 18th through the 23rd. So it's coming up fast you can still register for that cruise. So if you want to get on the cruise, just you know, find out how to register and how to get involved with my group by calling Pat Frank, she's our travel agent, and you can go to my website, here's the website address, www.sandyanastasi.com, and you'll see it right on the front page. And all you gotta do is click on there, get Pat's information, contact her, say, hey, I wanna go on this cruise, and she'll tell you how to do it and walk you through the whole thing. She makes it easy. VIPs. I know I've got a lot of VIPs on here because I'm recognizing your names. And what is a VIP? For those of you who don't know, uh, on my website, folks, I have a, it calls a membership. You'll see that up the top. The VIPs are people who belong to my membership program. So if you are a VIP, Please watch for a special announcement that's going to be coming soon, sometime during April. Not quite sure when it's coming out, but here's your announcement. Watch your email. It's going to, when you get that email from me mid-month, open it because it's going to have a lot of good information that you're going to want to read as a VIP. And VIPs, your next, and this is private just for VIPs, your next Q&A on all those courses in the VIP area is March 19th. Of 2020 so that's coming up mid-month now all the way over here on the other side guess what I have an app for those of you who aren't aware of it I have an app so if you want to get my app and on the app you can read my newsletter you can check out my classes if you have classes in your library you can actually take those classes in the library on the app and it makes it so much easier to access it and right here, this is what you click on to access the page to download that app. So uh, go ahead and do that if that is if that works for you and all the tools, like if you're like me, tools, your smartphone, your iPad, and all the toys. If it works for you, download it. So I'll be right at your fingertips. Um, and it's not too late, folks. If you want to join in with my psychic development program, it's a great program. It's moving along nicely. We've got great people in it. You can no longer get a certificate. We're too far along unless you're brilliant and you can really make up all that information, which is possible, I suppose. But um, for most people, if you joined in now, it would be just for a particular class. Gee, that sounds interesting. I want to study it. And yes, since the classes are running and they are live with me, I'm doing the Q&A on the class. Everything is there at your fingertips. If you want to join in, you can do that. Contact Lisa and she'll tell you how to do that. And that's all my announcements. Lisa, did I leave anything out? I think you covered everything. Good. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to get going. Who's our first caller? All righty. The first victim for tonight is Teresa. Teresa, you are unmuted. Hello there, Teresa. I can't hear you. I can hear you saying, hi, but I can't hear your voice. 
Hmm. Something seems. Yeah, the the microphone isn't working. Something's wrong with it. Lisa, I think we're going to have to go to the next caller and let Teresa see if she can't work the kinks out with her microphone. And meanwhile, Teresa, if that doesn't work out, type your question into the chat room and I can still answer it that way. OK, don't forget your name, which we know where you're calling from, what you're grateful for, your sun sign and then your question. So you get five pieces of information there. Lisa, who's next caller? All righty, let's try Dolores. Dolores, you are unmuted. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You know, I'm okay. so grateful that you, you came through really clearly, and so did Lisa, because when, when somebody has trouble with their mic like Teresa just did, I think to myself, hmm, is it my computer? So, <laughs> no, it's not my computer, we're good. And Teresa, that means that you're going to be able to unmute yours. You just got to figure it out, what's going on. You might have to press a few buttons on your computer. Dolores, where are you calling from? Hi, Sandia. I'm calling from Toronto, Canada. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It's cold <laughs> up there. Yes, not as cold as it has been, but it's still winter, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my sun sign is Taurus. Mm -hmm. And um, was there anything else before the question? Yeah, what you most grateful? Oh, what I'm most grateful for. Oh, my my partner Wilson. Oh, that is <laughs> that's so sweet. And it also, it also tells me. Um, you see what's happening here in the chart is interesting. The house that has Taurus on it is this eighth house cusp. This is mm. the house here where my cursor is. Yep. But 15 degrees, there are only 30 degrees in a sign, so 15 degrees is right smack in the middle. So the mm. first half of the sign is in the relationship house, what you're most grateful for, right? And mm -hmm. the second half of the sign is in the money house where the, mm. the moon is, and the moon is your significant other. So isn't that neat? <laughs> that is pretty like, neat. Oh my God. I like to point out these <laughs> fun little fun little facts that happen when the astrology says, yeah, yeah I'm accurate. See that? Um, uh, now, just uh, finally, oh, go on. Before you get to your, your specific question, a couple of sure. things I'd like to say about this. Um, Uranus has just entered into Taurus. And yes, I don't yes. Know if you've been with me the last couple of Q&As that I did, because uh, I've done a few of them right you know, in, in a row, but I'm going to repeat it because it's so very important. Um, Uranus spends seven years in the, any sign it goes through. It's a slow-moving planet. And it's a planet that revolutionizes everything it touches. It stirs the pot. It creates upheaval and discord and craziness. So when, when Uranus comes into Taurus's sign, it's never easy. Because Torians mm. like things to be just so, and they like they, they like stuff. They want to add to what they accumulate, but they don't want to change anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and that's just characteristic of the sign. But Uranus says, you know, you if you only have seven spaces for seven pairs of shoes, girl, and you really want that eighth pair, well, we're gonna clear the closet out so you can buy as many <laughs> shoes as you want. That's Uranus. And so most of the Taurians that we know, you included, um, are already having a little difficulty with this plan. You'll notice it's only almost four degrees, three degrees and 44 minutes. So it just entered Taurus like, you know, a couple of months ago. And you are definitely noticing it ringing your bell. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> OK. And now just for your information, you're going to get six and a half more years of it. So. Mm -hmm. This is something that you're going to have to learn to accommodate in your life. You're going to have to learn to be more flexible. You're going to have to learn to go with the flow. If there's a big old wall in front of you that you can't get through, the old method of taking out the chopping block and chopping it down is not going to work. You're going to have to learn to be flexible enough to go around the wall. You got it? <laughs> got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, in your particular case, and this this is true for every Taurus on the call, also for every Scorpio, that's the opposing sign, and for every Leo, that's the squaring sign, and for every Aquarius, which is the other squaring sign. So you guys, all of you, are going to be having a lot of fun learning to adjust to this flexibility. 
to this craziness in your lives, this unpredictability. The good part about Uranus, though, is that in the midst of all that craziness, you get phenomenal opportunities. Think about it. When, some, when the pot gets stirred, all of the nifty stuff that you couldn't see before comes to the top, right? That's Uranus. So it creates chaos, and in the midst of chaos, it creates opportunities for you to grow, to become, to evolve, to have anything that you want, as long as you're flexible enough to move with what the universe is giving you instead of saying, no, I want it my way, <laughs> okay? So just put all that information in the back of your mind because over the next six and a half years, for all of you fixed sign people, that information is going to help you get through a lot of issues. It's going to be invaluable. Now, for you specifically, because Uranus is in the house of relationship, it's not just you who's going through these crazy issues. It's your partner, <laughs> okay? And so guess what? You're going to have to be flexible and go on that roller coaster ride right along with him. And you already are, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> and it will be a wild ride. So what's your specific question? Well, um, you were speaking about opportunities, and that's kind of where my question is rooted. Um, not to go into too much detail, but... Um, I've kind of been out of work for about over a year, and while I have ideas um, to become self-employed, I know it's going to take a lot of time and resources. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm not bringing in any income. So my question is, um, I would love if you could just provide a little bit of insight into um, what do I still need to let go of to allow money to flow into my life, and what do I need to embrace? Okay, well... There are, that, those are some big, big questions. And, you know, I do, yes. I'm, I'm one of those people who really believes that nothing happens by accident. So the mm. first thing that I, I want to address is to please be um, constantly aware. Do not put your life on automatic at all. Right now in your life, that would be a mistake. So mm. be conscious, be aware of everything that's going on around you. It's only by doing that that you're going to be able to catch opportunities because those opportunities are often not delivered in your own language you've got to be observant to be able to see it coming, to see what it is it's number one now the place that money comes from for you personally is always the second house and in this chart that shows in the chart as this second house here which has scorpio on the cusp that takes us back to the second house where your moon is so the first thing I'm going to say is what has your significant other been suggesting? What has he been saying? You know what you could do? You know what you're so good at? Come on, let's hear it. Because I, oh, uh, I know he's been suggesting it. Yes, he's encouraging me to keep um, going with my writing. Um, I've right. been writing. And yes. so this, this is this moon here in the chart. It's in the Taurus house, but it's in Gemini. Guess what sign rules writing? Gemini. <laughs> and they're talking about your writing. Okay. Now, here's your creative house. And when I count the career houses, the career house is always the 10th house. When I connect the career house from you as a Taurus, it comes out to work from home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Work on the internet. There's Jupiter. And use your creativity. Mm -hmm. Duh. Now, let's take a look at writing for a moment. Everybody says, oh, my goodness, I need to go and be a writer. I need to take writing courses. I need to publish my memoirs. I need to find out how to get them published on Amazon, which incidentally is probably the best place for self-publishing right now for many, many, many reasons I won't go into. And everybody says, wow, I've got to do that book. Or I've got to find a magazine that'll, that'll let me write for them. Okay? And those aren't bad ideas. But are you aware that writing is a huge field, that copywriters make a whole lot of money, that every single ad company, marketing company, business, anybody, anytime you see anything, even publishing companies need people to do editing and rewriting. Are you getting the big picture here? Mm -hmm. And you're a skilled writer. 
I guess so. Um, so. I write in the children's field, um, yes. so I'm not very. In, in, I don't see myself being an editor, but that just might be a hurdle that I need to. Well, listen, ed editing isn't. You know, there are many different. Well, if you have written a book, there are many different levels of editing. Okay, mm -hmm. the old kind of editing, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's. Computer programs <laughs> do that. Yeah. But nowadays, editors will go through and they'll make sure that the the book or whatever it is is cohesive from beginning to end. And for people who don't even want to write their books, guess what? Somebody comes in and writes it, takes their idea and writes it for them. Oh, my mm. God. Writing is a wide open field for you. Mm. Writing is right. You have the skill. You have the ability. You love to do it. So let's look at what's holding you back. OK, why are you afraid to not do this? And by the way, one of the big things for you really is this fear of being self-employed. You know, you have this mm -hmm. feeling of I really want to work for this big company. The big company takes care of you and blah, 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 blah. It's history. And, you know, that's not a bad idea. That will then that could work. But why not do your writing then for a big company or do your writing for as an independent and, and sell yourself online and say, are you looking to write a book? I can write it for you. Give me your idea. Mm -hmm. I'll put it together for you. Do you see where I'm going? Mm -hmm. I'm just showing this. You have to get out of, see, this is poor me. You've got to be out of the poor me mode. Gee, I was mm -hmm. working for all that time, and they did this to me, and they did, get out of that poor me mode. That's not, that is not getting you anything except stuff. So go out mm -hmm. of the poor me mode. And decide, okay, if I want to use my writing skills, let's be open to possibility and take out the newspaper and look for job options that have something to do with writing or communication. And all of a sudden, you'll start to see the world open up for you. Go online and look for jobs in the writing field. And you're going to see a list as long as your arm. And then be creative. And use your intuition to follow through on the ones you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to be successful. I like his idea. Mm -hmm. My guides do. Okay. Thank you're you. so afraid that you're not going to be able to make enough money if you go out on your own. So yes. take your skill and work for someone. Even if you just get paid by the job, it's a start. It's money coming in. And even if your nine to five job or your eight to four job is packing bags in a grocery store, it'll pay some basic stuff and then you'll develop your real job in writing. He's right. Listen to him. Okay. Thank you. Hey, good luck to you. And chin up. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. You are going to be successful. You just have to get to the point where you believe in yourself as much as he does. Okay. Good luck. And Lisa, who's our next caller? Well, I'm going to go back and try Teresa again because she was trying a new set of headphones. Ah. Teresa, you're unmuted. Oh, isn't that interesting? It sounds like heavy breathing into the phone, Teresa. We almost had a word there. Uh-uh. No, it's not going to come through. Yeah, something's not adjusted, I think, properly in your computer. But I do have her question. Okay, go ahead. So I will read that to you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is Teresa from Texas. She's a cancer. She's grateful for her family, for you, and for me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> her question is, I have been given a chance to be an author in a book collaboration. Will I be chosen to participate as a writer for this book? And will it be a success for letting me come out as a psychic medium to my family and community? Okay, this is interesting. Okay. Um, first off, I love that you're you're great being grateful for your your family shows up right here because here you are, Cancer, which is on the tenth house, is in opposition to where the sign normally on the tenth house is. And that's in the house that's normally on cancer. And your question is about career. So this whole axis is the axis of family and career. 
and it, it fits your question perfectly. Okay, so not, I just wanted to point that out again. I love I love how accurately astrology, you know, focuses in on these questions you folks ask. Um, here's the thing. Um, first of all, collaborating on the book would be a great idea because it does help to get you over. You know, what my guides are saying is there are some very personal issues that you've had, not with the writing, but with the things that you're going to be writing about. Okay, so there have been some very personal issues in here that by writing it and collaborating, the whole act of participating in this book is going to be very healing for you and also healing for a lot of other people. So my guides are encouraging you to go ahead and do this. After they say that, they're also encouraging you to have no expectations. And I don't know what they mean about that. I don't know if that means that maybe the book is not going to be as successful as you might not hope, or maybe the part of it that you write is just going to be a little tiny section. Uh, they're just saying have no expectations. You're, the thing that you're going in to get out of this book is much more personal than you can possibly imagine right now. It's going to be something which is very beneficial to you personally. In, in the bigger outer world sense, it's, it's going to be, well, you know, okay, but I didn't get a lot of money from it or it didn't get a lot of recognition. So it's not going to be this wow, you know, out there in the world, but it's going to be a wow for you. Now, when you ask, is it, um, and, and this is also part of the reason why I'm getting to have no expectations. When you asked, um, is this going to be a way for you to come out as a medium to your family? What my guides are saying, again, the words have no expectations. So, yes, it'll be a way of your coming out as a medium, but you're kind of hoping that it's going to get you recognition, and I don't think it will. Will it get you acceptance? It will. But what's interesting is you want to get acceptance for the skill you have as a medium, and the acceptance is only going to be coming because you made some money off of this fun thing you do. And that's not really what you want, you see. So you're going to, you're going to get a little acceptance from the family, but you're not going to get the kind of acceptance you really want. And that's why my guides are saying, have no expectation. Um, they're telling me that ultimately, and it will take time, the book will bring you remuneration. There will be money that comes from it, but it won't be all at once. It's going to be slowly over a period, long period of time. Um, and so you're hoping that it's going to bring you a lot of recognition. And the recognition, sadly enough, is coming from the fact that, oh, she can make some money at that. Not from, wow, look at how good she is at that. So I wish I could, uh, you know, be much more positive about that whole recognition thing. But I do want to share this with you, and you're going to laugh. Um, I'm, I'm pretty well known in the field. I think you'll agree with that. And I've been well known in the field for 40 some odd years. And I was never really in the closet with my family. You know, I'm that kind of person. Hey, you know, this is what I do. Take it or leave it. I didn't push it at them. But none of them ever believed in it. None of them ever, they used to say, well, you know, my daughter doesn't work. <laughs> because they saw because I stayed at home and worked from home, I didn't work. Sounds like your family, right? They didn't believe that what I did was real until they walked into a new age store where I was working as a professional psychic doing readings. And even then, they didn't give me credit for being a psychic. They gave me pre credit for finding somebody stupid enough to employ a psychic. <laughs> okay? And uh, I'm not saying that because I'm trying to put our field down. I'm saying that because you're 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 talking about wow this is this beautiful wonderful thing and i want to share it with the world and you're talking about a family group that that what you're doing is simply beyond their comprehension so what happened with me is going to end up happening with you eventually when enough people came back and told my family what i did and told them that they were giving me recognition with a great deal of reticence, my family one day introduced me to one of their friends as my daughter, the psychic. And I was like, oh, my God, they finally got past that hump. And that was the that was the only recognition I ever received from the family. 
for the work that I do. So my guides are saying to you, I, I, I hope you don't go through that. You know, we really do. I learned to accept it. Okay, they just can't comprehend this, so they can't give that support. I hope it's not that extreme for you. But my guide said, share my story with you because you're going through something much the same, that you're feeling like this is so, so wonderful, so special. It's who you are and you want their support. You want their recognition for who you are. And the likelihood is you're not going to get it. Um, you will get recognition for being able to make a career out of it. And you want to know something? That ultimately will be far better because what that says is my guide is saying you're going to be successful as the writer. You're also going to be successful as the medium. Successful enough that your family will eventually give you, a re you recognition because you've been able to make a career out of this thing that they don't understand. Okay, so I hope that helps. Okay, and good luck to you. Okay, Lisa, who's next? And let me let me give you her answer. She said, "Yay!" <laughs> and thank you, Sandy. I really appreciate this message. This is truth. <laughs> and thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I was you're a fast typer. I didn't think you'd be able to type fast enough to get that back, but I'm very grateful. So who's next on? She's a psychic. She already had it written in the chat room before you asked the question. I love it. <laughs> All right, we're going to go down to Kevin. Kevin, you are unmuted. Hi, um, my name is Kevin. I'm from Alberta, Canada. And um, I'm very grateful for my family for their support. And my sun sign is Taurus. Another one. <laughs> okay. Another one, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was really interested in what you were saying earlier. Yeah, Kevin, can I? Can, how personal can I get here on the air? Do you have people there who anyway. want to hear things? No, I'm out here all by myself. Okay, so don't tell them about where this YouTube thing is going to be. I see relationship issues around, you, and uh, I don't know whether a relationship has recently ended or whether you're just having ups and downs in your relationship. But I see a lot of a lot of a lot of heavy emotion you're going through. Okay, um, now I'm going to ask you. Don't have to tell me, but I'm going to ask you: Are you in a new relationship, or is this a relationship that's been in existence for a while? No, it's an old relationship. Okay, here's here's the scoop, uh, and this is going to help you to make some decisions. Uranus definitely says here it is in Taurus. I didn't mention this before, but it's only eight degrees away from little old Venus, who rules relationships and is in Aries, saying about either you or your significant other, I want my freedom. I want to be independent. I want to be, I want to have a new life. I want to, you get the point. Okay. So this combination of planets is definitely creating upheaval in relationships in many, many different ways for all of the fixed signs right now. You guys are in all in transition. And incidentally, I should mention this, everybody, you know, you have 10 planets in your astrological chart, the way I work it. So everybody has some planets in fixed signs. So everybody's going through a little bit of this. But if you're a Taurus, you're going through a lot. <laughs> okay. And if the relationship is an old one, it's either going to end or go through a transition, kind of, kind of like, um, you know, you're going to ride that roller coaster ride like I was mentioning to our previous caller and the relationship will morph and shift into something probably new and better okay if it's an old one it has a better chance of survival than if it's a brand new one now if this had been someone you just met and you were in the whirlwind the throes of wow look at this I would kind of be warning you that um, enjoy it have a great time with it this could be a wonderful friendship that would morph into a love relationship, but it has probably got a longevity of two years before it ends as suddenly as it begins. Okay. Now that may help you to make some decisions about the relationship you're in. <laughs> okay. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, you can be pretty sure that there are going to be ups and downs and that you're going to have to flow with them instead of expecting 
that the waters are going to part and go around you like you did for most of your life, you may have to get in a canoe and float down river. You got it? Okay. Any specific questions yeah. that I've answered? Well, <laughs> you've, um, you, you pretty much, the, actually my question was we were going through a separation right now and like you said, it's all in turmoil and, and he's not really communicating with me. And that's what I'm wondering, you know, uh, what should I do? Like, should I hold in there or? Well, the first thing I'm going to say, and please, everybody listen to this. The very first psychic impression that you should always follow is your own. No matter what any psychic or medium or channel says, your own intuition is always the most accurate. You got it? So before okay. I answer, before I get information from my guides, I'm going to ask you, what does your intuition tell you? How do you feel in here? I really feel like, I feel like we are, there's a real connection there, like this, there's a long soul, um, soul connection with the two of us. Um, he's going through major stuff right now, and... I feel like I, I need to wait for him, but um, everybody else around me is telling me, no, you know, get your stuff out of there, uh, cut it off, and, yeah, well, and I just feel like that. Is, is, this is interesting. Here's uh, first thing I want to tell you is that um, there's a very good likelihood that there's another person involved. I don't know if you're aware of that, but there's a good likelihood. So. Yeah. If you are the guy who cannot get past your jealousy, who cannot understand that, you know, sometimes the, the pardon me for being this, this vulgar, but sometimes the gonads just overcome the, the, the common sense, okay? If you're the person who can overcome that mind possessive quality that every Taurus has, then hanging in there will work because the relationship, the, 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 the thing that he's got going is very painful and it's not going to work. Now, if you and he stayed involved while he was involved with this other person, that would be horrible for you. It would destroy your relationship with him, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get past it, is what I'm saying. So the whole concept of separating so he can see what's not greener on the other, in the next field is actually a good idea. But can you hang in there and still love that person and accept him when he comes back, because he will, knowing that he had to go and play. Can you accept that? Cool. You see? I can. And yeah. that's totally up to you, because there's a lot involved with that. You see? I mean, that's not just you accepting it. That's a lot of other people who've been telling you leave. <laughs> you mm -hmm. see? And you can't say to him, well, the psychic said this isn't going to work out, because then he's going to stay in that just to prove the psychic wrong. You get my point? So this yeah. is... This is a Torian waiting game, and it's not going to be fun. And it could last for two years. Uranus has this way, all you fixed sign people, please listen to this. It has this way of bringing in relationships that are so magnetic, because Uranus rules magnetism. They bring in these super incredibly magnetic relationships that often start out as friendships and then trans somehow mute uh, they morph into sexual relationships. And, you know, before long, you're in this relationship that's taking you like a tidal wave. And it's fabulous and wonderful and joyful because Uranus brings that super energy and chaos. And then two years later, you have both totally lost interest in each other. You simply separate, go your separate ways, wish each other well, and don't see each other for the rest of your lives. And nobody got hurt. Uranus is interesting that way. Okay. The people who get hurt are the bystanders, collateral damage. Is that making sense to you? So totally. If, yeah, if you can't go through this thing and not allow yourself to take it personally, you're going to be miserable, unhappy, and then your friends are right, move on. But if you can go through this thing and say, heck, he's, he's getting hit by the snowball of Uranus, and I'm going to get on with my life for now, but if he comes back, you know, well, I, I give it a try. If he doesn't come back, I might go on to something. I might meet a Uranian relationship of my own. Who knows? I could have some fun. Am I making sense? Totally. 
Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck to you. Thank you. And meanwhile, everybody's getting this really interesting uh, education about Uranus. Isn't it fun? <laughs> Lisa, who's our next caller? While I'm waiting. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, one last thing about Uranus. While I'm waiting for the next for you to pick on that next caller, Uranus has just left Aries. So, folks, all of you who are Aries, Libras, Cancers, and Capricorn, think about the kinds of relationship issues that you've gone through for the last seven years that have recently ended. Because that's what Taurus and Scorpio and Leo and Aquarius are just ready to wake up to. And I do want to thank our callers tonight for letting me uh, talk about that because it, it, these these conversations make it a whole lot easier uh, to survive these things life throws at us in, in a way that doesn't take us down. So, Lisa, who's our next caller? All righty, I'm going to go down here to Sandra S. Uh, Sandra, it says, oh, there you go, you're unmuted. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sandy. How are you? I am good. I'm good. I'm Sandra. I'm calling you from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and I'm an Aries. So I was listening to what you were just saying. And um, I'm most grateful for my children. Um, they've recently, uh, my oldest son recently moved back and my I have two boys and they're doing fantastic. And because of uh, childhood issues, I've had not the best relationship with them. So that's wonderful. And um, I'm actually at a really good place. I've come into great work and I've come out of a very long time of having um, just a, a closed heart and I've, I've come to peace. and. Everything is pretty much fantastic. I've been able to manifest just really good uh, material wealth. That's so the only thing that's really missing, um, which is my question to you, is I've had, because of just traumatic childhood and coming forth, difficult in relationships. Lots of difficulties and, and karmic relationships. And I've come out and I've been alone for a while and I've been okay with that. But I'm starting to get lonely and I feel that, you know, I don't know why. I don't know if it's retrograde. I'm looking at my exes are all with somebody and, and I'm just feeling it now. And I'm so careful that everything else is going so well. I know it's been a prog progression of lessons and I just don't know if there are more lessons coming or if there's something finally in the love department that I'm not willing to settle. So I don't know what's coming but i feel like it's itching yeah and it makes me nervous well, so. you know, understand but probably not like what i'm going to say um the first thing i want to say is that your kids moving back in this is great you seem to be at a point right now um where this is this is you down here is aries but here's where your kids are and right now you're able to form very powerful and healthy relationships with them, even with the one who's moved back, because you're no longer trying to relate to them as I'm the mother. You're able to be friends with them, okay? Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna find is that you can have a very healthy relationship with these wonderful people who are now your, your grown children as your friends, do you see? Whereas the mother-child relationship wasn't working for you, probably you're right, because of your own childhood experiences. OK, um, so this is healing. What's going on at home right now with the family? This is very healing. This is healthy. This is good. And just just flow with that because it's different than anything I think that you've ever experienced. And the reason that it is so good is because you are not you're not having expectation. When I talked about to the last caller, you're not saying this is how it has to be. You're you're dealing with each day as its own day. And each situation is its own situation. And as a result, you're able to evolve a relationship with your son, for example, that is something special that you've never had before because you're letting him actually be him. Now, that's going to be really good for you in another way. Because believe it or not, in learning to relate to your son on his terms, not on your terms, 
you are also exercising the ability to learn to relate to the man in your life. You're making sense? Now, I'm not saying that you're going to use your son to replace any man that you would have in your life. That's not it. But you are learning a new way of relating to men in this new way of relating to your son. Am I making sense? Yes. And please pay attention to that. And by the way, this information is coming from a grandmother who says she's sorry. Okay. Apparently, she blames herself for a lot of what happened to you. And this, this whole thing going on with your son right now, it's as healing for you as it is for him. And both of you are learning to create a very special relationship, and you will be able to carry over the things you learn in this relationship, because it's not always going to be smooth. You're going to have to work things through. You're going to have to listen to each other when you don't want to listen to each other. The thing is, you're really motivated with this kid. Therefore, you're going to go to lengths that you might not go to in a regular relationship. So here's the place you're learning to relate. You got it? Now, mm -hmm. another thing I want to say here, and this is about Aries specifically. People who are born into Aries are born into the sign Aries because in other lifetimes, they spent too much time giving everything away to everybody else, not living for themselves. So they don't know what they're capable of doing or what they're capable of achieving. So life often throws super incredibly difficult challenges at Aries so that Aries has to learn new things so that they can find out what they're all about. They can find out that they can succeed against any odds. Is this making sense to you? Okay, yeah. now all that I see is very good and very powerful, and that's how you've been living your life, and that's why you've been so successful because you rose to deal with all of that. Now we look at the issue of men. Here's the problem every time you get into a relationship with a man, it looks good going in, and then you repeat the same pattern. You get stuck in this is what I perceive, this is what I expect. And lo and behold, this is what I manifest. How'd that happen? <laughs> okay. And somehow the guy always turns out to be something other than what you saw going in. You got it? So how do you have a good relationship? You be friends, not just for a week or a month. You be friends for two or three years with that guy before you get into a relationship. You explore him as a person the same way you're exploring your son right now as a person. If you jumped into a relationship right now, and this is the unfortunate truth, you would end up back where you were in the last relationship. Not because you haven't grown, but because the instant you put the relationship on automatic, that's where it goes. Am I making sense? So much sense. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the next guy in your life, think about him as a friend. <laughs> okay. And you're going to do, oh, so much better. <laughs> okay? Just don't think about them as, wow, we're tying the knot. Wow, we have to do everything together. Wow, we have to live together, move in together, plan mm -hmm. a house. Don't go there. And everything else will flow. It will be good. Okay? Thank you so much, Nan. You're welcome. Good luck to you. Okay. Um, Lisa, who's our next caller? Okay, I know I'm probably going to get this name incorrect. Uh, pretty or Pridey. You're unmuted, I think. Either way, it sounds wonderful. I like this. Pretty. Let me try the other one. She's on here twice. Okay, you got to figure out which one to unmute. Are you there? It's P-R-I-T-I. Pretty? Shukla. Can you hear us? I have, I see she's muted on my mind. She's self-muted and she's muted. Let's undo our um, both. Oh, it's saying she has to go back and enter the PIN number. Yeah, and I can, I've been trying to unmute her and I can't unmute her. You can't. She yeah. has to do that on her end. She has the PIN number. Okay. So, Pretty, if you if you put in your PIN for the telephone, Lisa will be able to call on you. And until she 
does that, let's call on someone else. All righty, I'm going to go over to Jennifer. Jennifer, you're unmuted. Hi there. Hey, Jennifer. Good to hi, see you. this is, hi, sorry, this is Jennifer from Seattle. I have been oh. there. It's beautiful. Oh, you have. I have. <laughs> I love it. There. So and I'm most, most grateful for my dog, Luca. Oh. Do you have only one dog or two? One dog. You know, it could be just because I have dogs on the brain because uh, I have a hobby of dog breeding and I've got puppies, but uh, I see a second dog. So I don't know if you're planning on getting a second <laughs> dog. <by something. laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm always open to that in the universe. My dog turned 16 this month, so you oh, never know. Right. Hey, take, take it from both Lisa and I, who have had multiple dogs. And when those dogs get really old and you get a yeah. puppy, guess what? The older dog lives longer because it gets to, oh. it gets to, I think it gets to vamp off the puppy energy. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. that. Hey, I'm open to that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so time to look around. At any rate, I think there's going to be a new puppy coming in. And I also am seeing this really happy family situation around you. Um, and yet I'm seeing you in this moment, unhappy, probably with a young man around you. I don't know if that's a son or a, a uh, husband you're just seeing as a young guy, but I'm seeing, you know, the basically the family situation is a really good one, except you're, you might be having little issues with expectations that are not being fulfilled. So yeah. what is your question? And what well, my, big, <laughs> my big question I'm so excited about is, so I've been trying to figure out for a while how to make some money on the side um, and maybe um, how to put it all together and I'm constantly torn like should I go down towards the tarot path or mediumship or the psychic development class I've been doing readings for free for people for for a long time and it's now I'm feeling like I need I feel like I need a second modality or something um, especially for people that I don't if I'm not picking up a lot of soulful information, which is the type of readings I like to do, which are more essence and soul based. Um, so I kind of felt like I need something. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to suggest, um, I, I, I was asking questions as you were going through. Incidentally, what did you say your sun sign was? Um, is that your birth date? I'm a Gemini by my birth date, like May 23rd. Okay. Yeah, it would be. So you're right on the cusp, but you're still a Gemini. Yes, okay. I'm on the cusp, right. So, so your big problem with your readings, first of all, uh, is that, you know, you need to, you need to learn to ask people to give you money, number one. Right. Um, right. Number two, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be just really um, very, very, very blunt. Right. When you do those wonderful soul, gee, you're a wonderful person. And I see, you know, your Aunt Sue loves you and is there guiding you. And you're going to do these wonderful things with life because I see this beautiful energy coming up in you. And this is great stuff. And it may be very accurate for that individual. But the person who's hearing that listens to that and says, you know, I could have done that reading. They're not, <laughs> they're not seeing that it was really what they needed. You see, now, right. If, if that information comes through along with, you know, uh, I see that you have a son who is going off to college this year and you're really worried about it, but he's going to do OK. Now, right. all of a sudden, that little bit of detail about something real lets that person open up and really relate to all these other wonderful things you said and say, wow, that, that could really be true. So okay. you must, you know, even though you, you know, you really think, and I get it because I'm like that too. You're thinking this big, beautiful world, otherworldly picture, and you hear that that person, they still need to have the feet on the ground. You know, you had apples yeah. for breakfast, and next year you're going to be living outside of Seattle. They need to hear right. it. <laughs> right, right, right. I love that. Right. Okay. Um, that's that's the first thing you need to know. The second thing, and I'm not sure why this is, but my guides are telling me rather than just sticking with the tarot, which is good. I, I love tarot. Matter of fact, you can't see it from where you're at, but when I do these shows, you see the astrology uh, on the board. But right on the desk in front of me, I have a spread of cards laid out. So I work with cards all the time. I work with astrology. I see things flying through the air. I feel things. I have a thousand <laughs> ways that information comes. 
And right. maybe that's why they're, they're telling me you need to take the psychic development class. Now, okay. I don't yeah. know if you're referring to mine or if there's yes. if you're in Seattle you're thinking about, but whatever it is, they're the one the one that's in your mind. They're saying you need to take that class. It's going okay. to make a difference in, in your readings and your ability to earn the money with it. And, you know, your big thing is uh, not only you're a very skilled communicator, you certainly have the ability to earn money with your readings. You, you, matter of fact, you've already made some. You should you should realize that and not go back to freebies. And <laughs> right. you also want to be in a position where you can be independently taking care of your household right. with readings instead of having to constantly split time and be all over the place. And my guides say you're perfectly capable of doing that. But you've got to have the ability to organize it. And so that said, if you do, if you end up taking my psychic development program, whether you mm -hmm. take it, you know, with the classes I've got going now, or you take it just with the videos, which you can purchase separately, or mm -hmm. you know, some people get the videos and then purchase coaching. You know, the thing oh, is, right. the different ways okay. that you could do it. The thing is right. that I'm going to say that when you're done with that, you need to go on and there's a, a follow up program that is about developing your own business. And it's a okay. program and you need to go on and do that because you're, you're that gal who has so much ability, but you don't know how to push through into right. developing your own business. Right. And, and that's, you know, once you've got all those skills all lined up, now you need to develop it as your own business and what's the best way to do that, okay? okay. And it can happen with coaching with me, but it also could happen with that online program. Okay. okay, great. Thank you so much to both you and Lisa. Appreciate You're everything. Welcome. You're very, very welcome. Um, okay. Lisa, I think I have time for you know, like four or five minutes left. I've got time for one last caller. If I go fast, I can squeeze that in. You're a Gemini. You can go fast. <laughs> I talk fast. Yes, I know. <laughs> I didn't say that. All right. I'm going to try pretty one more time and see if we can unmute her. Pretty, it says you're, you're self-muted. Can you unmute now on your end? Are you thinking that's not going to work? Oh, there she is. Unmuted. Oh, no, I can't. Let's try unmuting Pretty. No. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. It said I was unmuted, but I guess you guys can figure out, but we got it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm from um, Hollywood, Florida, and um, my sign is uh, Cancer. Is that, did I give her all my information? You did, and you heard a little bit of what I was saying to the last caller, who was also a Cancer. So in your life right now, what are your big concerns? Family and career, yes? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, mostly career. Yep. Okay, and what would you like to know specifically about your career? Um, right now, like I had some challenges in the last several years with some business partners and people and I'm getting myself back on my feet. I'm doing some stuff, but I understand it, but I'm just not able to, uh, I guess, find the right people or moving forward with it. Or I feel like I'm stuck with learning some of this stuff as well as I also volunteer work with this uh, high profile individual rather than I give any names or information. Yeah. And it's also like I have a true passion for that in the networking that I get from meeting this person and being around this person and helping this person. I, I think so. I'm, I'm just kind of. I think I'm seeing the person you're talking about. Uh, I may, or maybe someone else. I'm seeing an older male. That's uh, somebody you really look up to and relate well with. I see him as helping you a great deal, and I see the, the work that you're doing with him as being successful for you and also for him. And I do see the need for secrecy involved with that. Okay. Um, and so all that is panning right out with what you said. Now, when you said, will you be successful doing something other than that? Yes, you will, but not right now. So right now it's kind of like you're on a learning curve. The learning is taking time, but by doing what you're doing with him, it's giving you time to do that learning. Um, can I tell you, I think you're expecting too much of yourself in the moment. And you're, you're kind of yelling at yourself because this is going too slowly. It needs to happen faster. Mm -hmm. 
And what my guides are saying, this is happening exactly in the time frame it's supposed to be happening in. And you need to be, instead of trying to push it to fruition, which is what your tendency is, you need to allow it to reach fruition. Because this is going to take you places. It's going to be very successful. But if you try to push it in the direction it's not meaning to go, it will not be successful. I hope that makes sense to you. And as far as the learning is concerned, yes, there's a learning curve. But when I ask, can you learn what needs to be learned, I get an absolute yes. You certainly can. And ultimately, you're going to be self-supported. You will be financially independent. And I think that's your goal. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, no, that's definitely, I, I, it resonates with me. And uh, one other thing is that they're offering me to work for them and paying me a salary. And I'm considering taking it, but at the same time, I do like my flexibility and my time freedom and stuff. That's what I'm also battling. It's a good idea to take that because that would, yes, it cuts, remember, it slows you down, but it also, it also sets in motion that drive that you have to be successful mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll it'll force you to embrace those things that you need to embrace to be able to learn and grow faster so it's actually a good thing um will it be smooth and easy no but it's a good thing to do okay no thank you i greatly appreciate that input it was, i resonate you're very welcome mm -hmm. good luck it sounds yeah. like it'll be great thank you. So long. And folks, I'm going to say so long to everyone who's here this evening. Remember, if you were on the call and you did not get a chance to ask your question, I'll accept your question anytime up until nine o'clock tomorrow night in an email form. One simple question. That's all. And uh, one last thing, there were a couple of people who sent their questions in early. And I've got to tell you, I do not even look at them. I don't even read them. So please don't send your questions in early. And those people who sent them in early, if you're here on the call, you need to resend those questions because I, I didn't address them. I just kind of threw them away. And the reason for that is I can't connect to any one caller before the call. Otherwise, my guidance won't come through clearly the way it does. Okay. So any emails that hit me before the, the show, uh, they, they don't go anywhere. Okay. You've got to email them to me after the show. Okay, or send them through to Lisa, or you know maybe she can read them off in the chat room. But I I'm not going to look at them. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful month, and I'll see you back here on April 5th. Good night. <laughs>